Okay, today on Basic Electronics episode 3, we're going to be talking about desoldering parts. Now this is going to be one of the easiest ways to save a lot of money when buying parts. Because you don't necessarily need to buy brand new parts. There's plenty of good ones that can be salvaged on old circuit boards. Now these are disposable cameras that I have right here. I have a bunch of them, so they're kind of expendable for uh, trying to teach you electronics. So uh, I'm just going to get started with things that you'll need. Um, to desolder, this might sound kind of strange, to desolder you actually need solder or it's helpful to have anyway. Another thing that's really nice, or the way I'm going to be showing you, is this Radio Shack desoldering iron. It's got a pump on it. And uh, you just put it on, a, on the circuit board and it heats up and you, or you depress it, hold it over one of the circuit board traces, and you release, sucks up all the solder. You probably couldn't see that, but it's and then it spits it out. Uh, another thing that's helpful to have is uh, can't see it from there. Your helping hands. I'm trying to keep this as close as possible so you can see it. Um, yeah. And another thing that's nice to have is just a normal soldering iron. This is a just another Radio Shack 40 watt. Oh, and uh, one more thing. A wet sponge works because to clean off the tip of the iron, even with this thing, the desoldering iron, you just can run it over the uh, sponge a few times and that'll help keep the tip clean so it'll melt solder easier. So I'm going to start by showing you how to take out this big capacitor. So, first step is if you don't necessarily need to do this first step, but set your part, your circuit board, into the helping hands if you have them. This step is not necessary, but it is very helpful. Then you take the Radio Shack desoldering iron. This is 45 watts of power. And I'm going to use my other hand to hold the board steady. You, you depress the bulb. And then you hold, then you put the hole into the trace and you release. And then it's, that sucked up all the solder, you probably couldn't see it very easily. And then you just go like that and it, a uh, couple times, and it'll shoot all the solder out of the bulb and clean it out so it's ready for the next one. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to set it down on the stand. And that was very simple. It took the part right out, and then you can s then uh, stuff's flying off my shelf. You can take a needle nose pliers, straighten the leads back up, and you've got a perfectly usable part right there. This is a uh, actually, by the way, this is not marked. I'll have to check it with a multimeter or something. Uh, what other parts can be salvaged? There's tons of them. Every single part on here can be salvaged. But, um... Uh, let's see, I'm going to have another good example. I guess we can do this LED. Same thing, you just... And this is very quick and easy. I'm getting parts really fast. I can get uh prob I I've never really counted before, but I'll just look at the clock and it'll have been three hours and I have just one of my parts been trades, you probably can't see it. One of those like half full. I have a lot of circuit boards though that I can do solder from. A good I or something that's a good idea to do is put down something underneath. I'm just, this is just right on my table, but if you put down paper or something, it'd probably be easier to clean up. And another thing, when you, uh, clean out the desoldering iron, it's best to, uh, it says this right on the back of the box, it's best to spray it into a can or something. 
and uh, it's just easier to clean up because you can just the can's probably disposable unless you use something you don't really want to throw out. You could and but it will take a while to fill up if you just used a normal soup can or something. Um, I'll take out a couple more parts, but I highly recommend this. The reviews on this thing are great. It works great for me. It's kind of a shorter video, but um. I said I was going to do the Atari Punk console, and my parts haven't arrived yet. So, basically, as soon as those arrive, then we're good to go. I'll show you some... I'm not going to show you just the Atari Punk console. I'm going to show you some mods you can do to it, too. Got a capacitor. Like, uh, there's all sorts of stuff. Like the, uh, there's plenty of mods out there. I'll show some of basic ones from like, uh, using a dip switch to control the pitch. Or, uh, even this comp kind of complex thing where you take another 555 timer and you pulse it. But like I said, not all my parts have arrived. I have a lot of, I have all the parts to build an Atari Punk console in my parts bin. But I don't have the ones to do all the mods that I want to show you. I'm going to try and make that the most informative video I can. So you, uh, you can get a lot out of it. Because the Atari Punk console, there's a million videos out there on how to do it. Oh, and there's another one that I found that I'm going to uh, try. You take a couple of computer fans and you attach them. And you can get a pretty cool effect with it. So I'll show you all those. Uh, possibly my next video. I'm ord I ordered parts from Jameco, so um, maybe I'll do a video on ordering parts from a supplier or something. But that's probably going to do it for this video. Highly recommend the desoldering iron. Clean it off a little bit. It works great. Takes like three minutes to heat up. Got all my I just plugged it in. Got all my uh, video equipment set up, and it was already hot. So. It works great. Highly recommend it. I mean, this was like eleven dollars, and I cannot complain at all. Uh, the only thing is, if you buy this soldering iron, I just got this yesterday, I think. But one thing is, see if you can see it. It's gonna be hard to see. But solder doesn't stick to it very well. I mean, it's it's really hard to see, but it doesn't stick to it great. And one last thing about soldering, if you are soldering, be sure to do it in a well-ventilated space as if possible. Uh, th I'm just doing this in my room because it's cold outside right now and there's no way I can, uh, I can't work in my garage. So, it's probably not the best to be working in an enclosed space like this, but just if you take frequent breaks, you should be fine. Just don't be breathing in the fumes. Contrary to prior belief, right before I go, it's not actually lead fumes that are emitting while I'm soldering. It's the flux. Lead takes s several thousand degrees to melt, and soldering irons max out at about 900. So what's melting is the, uh, or the stuff that's burning is the flux. Which still is not great to breathe in, but it's not, you're not going to get lead poisoning. Unless you're actually like eating the solder or something, which, yeah, I mean that's obviously something you're not gonna do. So that's gonna be it for this video. Tune in next week, and we'll probably learn about the Atari Punk console if possible, if my parts have arrived by then. Uh, yeah, or it, m it might be a Jameco review. Depends on what will work better, and if all the parts come in my Jameco order. I'll also have a door alarm on the way. I ordered a 108 decibel siren if that shows up and it works great. I'm obviously going to show you a door alarm. So, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you later. Bye.